Hi, and welcome to another episode of Family Dynamics. It's Liz. And Catherine. And Ed. And John. And we're joined by two special guests. Well, not really special in the sense that they have been here before. But they're still special. Of course. Our little sisters. Say hi. Hey, it's Rosemary. And Virginia. Yay. Yes, I'm very happy to have you guys here today. So it's actually all four sisters are in the house. I know. It's funny to actually, in this little podcast studio, six of the siblings. So the only one not (gasps) here is James. It's It's all the SoCal. Yeah, it's all the local siblings. It doesn't feel like that many people, does it? No. No. No, oh, really? It but that's weird. That's because none of our spouses yeah, and kids. Yeah, your entourages and, yeah. are missing. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, when you think back, I mean, there were eight kids, so we're only there's two not here, and it's like, it's, so it, six kids today would feel like an overwhelming amount of kids, but. <laughs> It's like, like all of us in one room doesn't feel like, like that big what? of a deal. That's weird. If I was the parent of them, it would feel like a lot. Holy moly. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be like, exactly. ah. Well, I wanted to uh, start off with it is October. So that is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the statistics that goes around is one in four. And there's four of us. And I don't think we've talked about this on the podcast yet, have we? I don't think so. No. No. So... You know, in a way, it's like it seems to hit everybody um, in the sense of whether they're family or friends. And within our family, we have had someone. So Virginia, our littlest sister, which as a big sister. <laughs> yeah. It can be hard because in the way you're almost like, I'd rather take the hit than my little sister. But that's not the way it happened. Sorry for getting emotional because this is not my story. This is George, Virginia. Aww. So, um, like I said, you know, we're four sisters um, and our little baby sister. So it's now been two years. I know. It seems crazy. Um, It was during COVID. And I remember feeling a lump, which some of us have had before. And, you know, they do, you know, an extra ultrasound or this and that. And it ends up being kind of nothing and it resolves. But um, then I was like, it's really not going away. It feels pretty big. It kind of hurts. So even though it was doing, during COVID and you might have put off a dentist appointment or a haircut, I was like, I better get in there. So, um, yeah, I went in. Mm-hmm. And um, my doctor, who I had both babies with, so I've known for years, was like, how long has this been here? I'm like, I don't know, like, I think like a couple of weeks. And she's like, longer than that. So I don't know why that was her opinion. But she's like, yeah, okay. So we'll have you get... Um, an ultrasound and um well no i had to get a mammogram you have to go see the doctor to get a mammogram so i remember talking to my friend later that day and i I told her about it and i said uh yeah so i have an appointment for it was like a month out and she's like wait what you have a lump and you have an appointment a month out she's like you hang up this phone right now and get someone to give you an appointment like today (laughs) (laughs) thank you to that friend lene yeah she was adamant. There was some other things she was adamant about. Maybe I should have taken her advice on like getting second opinions, but whatever. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so I did hang up and I called back and I said, you know, I got this appointment, but is there anywhere else I could go that has it sooner? And sure enough, drive out to, I don't know, it was like Burbank, which for me is like, I don't even go past the school most of the time <laughs> as a stay-at-home mom. Like if it's not in my school route, forget it. <laughs> um, so I did go out to Burbank the next day. Yeah. And of course it comes back and it's like, oh, well, you got to get a, a needle biopsy. And Liz, you took me. Right. Thank God you did. And that was also, that was pretty quick. Just like they moved on that pretty quick and we went all the way out to Glendale. And I really pushed myself during that appointment to like ask, you know, that it's a doctor doing it. Right. She was doing the ultrasound and the needle biopsy at the same time. Just and like, did they tag? Because I think yes. both Rosie and I had yes. needle biopsies in, previously. Mm-hmm. And that's why in some ways I went with you because I'd been through it before. Mm-hmm. They did put a little uh, marker in there. Yeah, and we weren't. The the level of concern was high, but we were, because Rosie and I had been through it and had, you know, negative results. Exactly. I had yeah. had something before that turned right. out to be nothing. It, it was on the opposite boob, by the way. But, um, so I did, I'm sitting there, you know, laying on the table with my boob out and I did push myself to ask her, like, so what do you think? She's like, well, there's a lot of, I don't know what she said, calcification and whatever else she said. And I said, well, does that indicate cancer which again was just so hard to even ask Mm -hmm. but she's like yes it can like she definitely didn't sugarcoat anything she's like i am concerned like she gave me a couple responses that i was like oh okay um gosh that's rare usually they don't like to tell you while they're doing it yeah they don't like to say anything i know she definitely didn't Mm -hmm. sugarcoat neutral or whatever she definitely was like well this is concerning or this yeah yeah. 
Mm -hmm. So then we got that report. I remember, I think I texted you guys and was like, hey, can we get on a conference call? Because like, for some reason, it was just really hard to put in writing. And I didn't want to tell Rosie and then call it. I just like, Everyone was so great. They hopped on the phone and yeah, you like a conference call, but it is a good way just why. to rally the troops. That was just all a once. coping thing where I just yeah. was like, um, "Here's the information and goodbye." Everyone was really good about just like you know letting me get off real quick. But it definitely said that it was malignant carcinoma. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, well that's cancer, you know. So it didn't use the word cancer, but it's like malignant carcinoma. That's what that is. So then the next step was the MRI because an MRI will tell you how much, like it gives you a better definition, I guess, of where it is, the measurements. So think about it. I mean, Breast Cancer Awareness Month is October. That's when I really was like, I got to do something about this. It took all the way till right before Christmas. It was Christmas Eve that I was like tracking down that MRI because I knew everything was going to close. And I got it before my doctor even got it. And I read it and it was like, it, it was just really hard because it said, um, that it was greater than 75%. Mm. So it said it precludes breast conservation, um, I think mm. was the term. Mm -hmm. But it was like, yeah, it's too much. You're not going to be able to keep your boob. And I was like, oh. Merry was, Christmas? Are you serious? Yeah. I don't think I knew you got that on Christmas Eve. We got it on Christmas Eve. We still went to Mass. It was I COVID. Know, I saw we had you outdoor Mass. Mass. I literally oh, was like, I was going to wear a dress and heels. And then I was like, okay, I'm just going to wear this red these red pants and this green s sweater and this is good enough and you came it was outdoor mass it was really yeah, nice mm -hmm. but in a way as hard as it was it was to read that it wasn't that surprising because i mean i'm sure i talked to rosie was like how are they going to remove this and me still have any sort of breast left it was i always described it as the size of like two stacked walnuts mm -hmm. that's what it kind of felt like to me it was mm -hmm. like it was a decent size so i was like there's no way there's gonna be like unless i'm wrong and I don't understand how this works. Like, how are they going to take that out and everything's still going to be okay? Yeah, you didn't feel like a lumpectomy, which right. is just going in and taking right. a lump out. Which is the possible. least, in, yeah. the less invasive, right? But where I got really lucky, you know, to cut the story down short, I could just have one breast removed, but I did both, which is really great for like um, potential reoccurrence. So mm -hmm. I feel good about that. I also was like, whatever they're going to do with one side, let's just do it to both so it looks even. <laughs> um, but just to jump to the end of the story, I do feel lucky that. Um, even though I felt the lump in October, I didn't have the mastectomy until February. Um, the pathology showed that it was still contained within the breast, still within the milk ducts. It had not gone through the lymph nodes into other parts of my body. So that's the real silver lining because, because of that, I didn't have to have chemo. I didn't have yeah. to have radiation. I'm on medication, which some people I've talked, I mean, I was in a support group and I, we all know too many people that have gone through it, but some people are fine with that medication. For me, I, I don't, could be coincidence, but I just feel like taking a nap at a stop sign. I mean, it's oh. just it's like, my doctor does say that is a common side effect. So instead of taking it once a day, she broke it up into twice a day to try and, and that did help taking it. I mean, it is one of our gifts is kill months oh, to nap. So it even burst, helps yeah. it is really oh, dangerous. God. I know I've, I added so many vitamins in this and that to try and help. And it's like, oh, God. But anyway, so I did put a shout out on, on Facebook. It's like, hey, I was not overdue for my mammogram. Mm -hmm. I really wasn't. I had gotten one about the previous year. And so I did ask the oncologist like, hey, would this have shown? I mean, it's greater than 75 percent of my right boob. It's like, would this have shown up in my last mammogram? And she said, yes, mammograms are very good at detecting, you know, those cells. I'm like, so again, Rosie was there. I'm like, so this really did develop just over the past year? She's like, yeah. Wow. It's like, so if I had gone another year. Oh, yeah. I mean, and, and she said, you don't always feel a lump, you know, right. that I was kind of lucky with that. So it's like, if I had gone another year, I, I doubt it would have been the same outcome. And again, it probably just would have meant chemo. They have great treatments now. But who wants to go through that? You know, no, it's catching early. You know, early prevention is why mammograms exist. And then catching early, hopefully, you know, able to handle it. Every breast cancer journey seems to be different. Because like you said, we've had friends and family and Every single one of them has been different. And yeah. I wanted to give mm -hmm. a shout out to Jan Roman because I remember I was my mother-in-law who's yeah, been on a the podcast mom. before. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it, it's not like it just affects middle-aged women or something. She was older, right? Was she in her late? Uh, yeah, she was in her later sixties, I yeah. think. Yeah. It was a very big surprise, and she had put off a mammogram because I think women sometimes think whether you're you know you're out of childbearing years, you've gone through menopause. There's a part of you that I don't want to say your sexuality isn't your main focus or you just don't feel like they're an entity so much so you have to worry about them. It's sort of like, oh, you know, they're not being used to feed children. They're not so much maybe the sexual vibe they used to be. 
uh, you still need to get the mammogram every year. So she had put it off for a few years. And then my sister-in-law dug in and was like, no, mom, you got to go get it. And unfortunately she had it, but you know, she's been a survivor for quite a few years. And uh, you know, we've had a lot of friends, the podcast I used to do with Jillian. She talked about Mm -hmm. it quite often. Jillian Barbary. Jillian sent me like a care package and I still use this cup. She sent me right next to my bed. Cause like after surgery, your throat's so dry. And I use this blanket. She sent me like, she sent me the sweetest stuff. Well, it's a support group. They say that you never want to belong to, but if you do, I mean, I'm just speaking out of turn only from you know peripheral experience that you have an amazing support group because so many women have gone through it survived it but at the same time unfortunately some have not so we're so blessed that you're here and we're two years i mean you got tested for the BRCA gene too right Yeah, came back negative Mm -hmm. um but yeah there's a mom at my school going through it right now and it's like i reached out to see if she wanted me to set up a meal train she said yes and people signed up for it she she, you're so sweet you did right now with everything like i know they were trying to send me meals i'm like no no i mean i got so (laughs) much love and support with my first two surgeries i mean the first surgery my house looked like a floral shop it was awesome i mean i had flowers in my bathroom my bedroom my kitchen it was like it was like the side should have been like take got, a claritin before you walk in the house. <laughs> oh my God. it was it was really uplifting that yes it was I, I don't know about other people's experience that double mastectomy freaking hurt i didn't know what to expect so it, i guess it just i didn't know but being swollen all through my armpits and my back and just like i mean brian had to like help me with my pants i couldn't do it right. um it was super painful so having all those flowers was really nice <laughs> and i had a meal train for four weeks you know so i was happy to help her um she's gonna go through 21 weeks of chemo oh yeah wow so, wow you know Jeez. and she had a mastectomy she only did one side and you know you're waiting in between and It got infected. Oh. You know, and she's in pain and she's got a fever and has to be rushed to the hospital. So it's like, the least I could do is like, don't worry about dinner. It's like, I only ordered her pizza one night, (laughs) you know, but, (laughs) and I I do, I do it right off the back. Cause I'm like, I'll take the pizza the first night. Everybody else, you better do something more fancy. Cause (laughs) you're making a casserole. Yeah. You're on the casserole (laughs) duty. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Cause I think, you know what, you know, it's been a two year, I mean, you kind of have said uh, when you first John got, nailed it, right? Our youngest brother. Yeah, uh, I did that conference call, and he's like, "Well, you know, I was telling him what was going to happen next." And he said, "Well, it's going to be a journey." And I was like, "Shut up! No, no, it's not. I'm going to get a lumpectomy. It'll be over and done." <laughs> and two years later, <laughs> oops, <laughs> John the foreteller. Yes. Yeah, I was like hearing the word journey, like, "No, no, that sounds too long." Well, that's what it was. But I think I'm at the end of it now, which is great. Yeah, we'd knock on wood, but that in the podcast is annoying because then you hear it, but knocking on wood, yes. And praying for that because, you know, you've been an amazing trooper through all this with really a positive attitude, really through so much of it, which is part of it. But with two younger daughters who, you know, their schedules and their lives and never let up. When did you get your second dog? Did you get your second dog? Over during- COVID. We- I mean, my gosh, pile oh my- on. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, oh my goodness. But she has been like a little love bug for you, right? The second dog. Oh, she was. She was like a comfort therapy dog at first. Um, The one we adopted, she's kind of a little overweight and she doesn't move a lot. She likes to rest (laughs) a lot. So during this last surgery, it's like for her to make an appearance in my room, I feel so special. I'm like, Harley came to check on me. Because it's like, well, I better, where is she? Wander down there. She really doesn't. She doesn't make it all the way to my room. She is fully mobile. (laughs) <laughs> she is fine. Yes. <laughs> Poor lady. Um, so, yeah, and actually I think, you know, um, on Patreon you said you'd be willing to maybe come on and talk a little more in sure. depth about your whole journey. So we'll do that where it's a little, you know, more intimate and we talk about what the last two years looked like for you. Sure. But we can switch to a more lighter note. Like October is also Halloween. Yes, exactly. Right? That's yeah. more fun to so talk we'll about. Just, we'll wrap up that one thing by saying, you know, to all you ladies out there that have the tatas, the titties, the boobies, whatever you want to call <laughs> them, <laughs> get them checked. It's... Hey, even if you're in the itty bitty titty committee. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> this because... well, wait a minute. I will say, yeah. having four sisters, bizarrely, four different bra sizes. Oh, so, all different boobs. So, like, like everybody looks different. There's yeah. no like, I inherited my mother's boobs. No, we literally, every single one of us had a different boob size and shape. Sorry, boys, uh, you're in the room, but it's true. So make sure you go get your mammogram. Uh, there are ways to get them free as well. So do not, for any insurance or cost purposes, put it off. It's too important. So October Breast Cancer Awareness Month, 
Make sure you get your boobs checked. Go get your mammograms. Ginny, we love you. Oh, thank you. And we're you so guys proud of you. Awesome. So awesome. Such a great support. All right. So, yes, also October is Halloween, which growing up in our household, <laughs> I just remember, can I just. Various yeah. levels of success. Well, I remember the hodgepodge of trying to come up with costumes at the last minute. Well, we had like a like, box, didn't of we? Weird, the like, costume box of yeah. half leftover, unused, not <laughs> fully functioning <laughs> stains. Where are those later, Hosen? Yeah. 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 Where did whoever those bought the. Those were real. I know. That's what I think they were. You had to be seven or eight years old to even fit in the laser hosen. So like later hosen. Later 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 hosen. Nice. (laughs) So I don't even know why we had them. Like none of us ever went to Switzerland. None of us like why did we have them? Grandpa brought them back. Oh Oh, really? Really from a trip that he went on and one Uh of us. (laughs) <laughs> and he brought mom back a pair of like, um, you know, the clogs or whatever. So they were moms oh. when she was little. Like they were no, that no, old? I, or no, I think no, no. For a kid, you mean? Yes, they were for a kid. Oh, no. yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. Oh probably gosh. like James or William, he wanted them to be a little... Yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. Ricola! I just, <laughs> <laughs> I just went in Catherine's closet and found a costume. What? No, twice I did. So once I wore like a prom dress of yours. Oh my gosh, <laughs> hilarious. Okay. What were you in the prom dress? I'm like a princess. princess, but this was like oh, was it the obviously. white and pink one? It was something pink. That I was wore, like your only prom dress. It, well, I think it I made had, the rounds. Yeah, I had two prom dresses, and definitely the big white and pink one. I wore to school one year and was Glenda the Good Witch. Oh, that was a good costume. Yeah. Yeah. Where is that dress? That was such I a good know, one. I don't know. Didn't you lend one of my prom dresses oh, to no. like a friend, and we never saw it again? Liz. Of course. <laughs> I was like, how does it all <laughs> always turn back on Liz and inappropriate lending? <laughs> of course well, you know. That's probably accurate. So wait, you were, you think you were like a princess in the prom dress? Yes. And that, so I was a little older because me and my friends, it was our last year trick-or-treating and we were going around our neighborhood and some truck came by oh. and these guys like paintballed us. What? Oh God. We were With like, paintball guns? Right. But we didn't know they were paintball. We thought they were shooting us. And Charity, what? Charity was with us, so it must have been probably freshman year of high school. And you guys were wild. She's like, I got shot, I got shot, and it was totally like red paintball. And oh so we totally God. went to a door and knocked her. Like, oh my God, our friend got shot. And then she's like, Wait, wait, it's paint, it's paint. Oh Are my you? God. But we still were like, Should we I have my dad come pick us up? Oh my God, that's horrible. It was, wait. it was kind of scary. That same year. I used to always play this. I used to be like, oh, it's my birthday, because my birthday is a couple of days after Halloween. And he's like, oh, well, then I have a special treat for you. And he like went in the house, and he came back with like, oh, they were Money. like ice cream sandwiches he oh. made or something. They were like, like homemade. homemade. Oh, like he, maybe right he did. in the garbage. And we were like, oh my God, they could be poison. Don't eat it. Yeah, we I was totally like, you're going to throw that right stranger's out. house, you'd walk up to and be like, and it's my birthday. Well, you're like, can I have extra? I mean, I mean, don't you always love the people who like forget and like bring out their change, like some raisins? Oh, here's, some, here's a box of raisins. <laughs> oh well, that's the worst. I like the change dish. You know, some guy who's been sitting smoking well, cigarettes. Because we like, were, oh, it's, uh, it's Halloween. Because, Lord, here's a dollar. You're like, okay, because we were the jerk kids. Here, we we would show door, up late. Lights on, lights off. I don't care. That's what it is. <laughs> the problem is, if either lights are out, there's don't literally go. no indication of light. That means, like, don't knock on my door. No one got off scot free. Every from the house kids. was getting knock, mailed. knock, knock, knock. Well, fine. Where'd you change? Sure. Oh my God, my name. Fine. Give me now? a bag of pretzels. But I will say this: we, n- we were something. never trickers. We only went, no. we only went in for the treats. There were n- none of us no, were tricking. No, we I'm like throwing eggs. Tricks. We weren't TPing houses. Oh God, no. We're yeah, smashing no. pumpkins. Oh my what God, my no, birthday no. trick. So my birthday trick. Give me extra candy because it's my birthday. Uh, that is a trick. Uh, it's tricky. That sounds about tricky. right. A little tricky. You always did a little shady, little something, but little you always had your little extra. stories. Yeah. No, but we would when we were younger. Also, mom and dad wouldn't walk around with us. That was not the era of that. Oh, no, no, no. We and we would wait till it was dark. Like you had to wait. That's. But like Absolutely trick or what treaters it was. now, it'll be like five, five. o'clock, and you're like, it's school, daylight. It'll be on the now. way home from school that day at three thirty in the costume that they wore <laughs> to class. You're like, what? Hi. You're like, I don't even have the candy out yet. <laughs> okay, wait. The other costume I stole from Catherine's closet. What? Oh, yeah. okay. Uh huh. And this was also a really good one. Was your McDonald's uniform? Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. God, why didn't you save that? I don't know. That would have been a good. Like, I think you could have sold it on costume. eBay for. I think, and that was that was a bad year because I went trick or with Vanessa and probably like Danielle or something, which they live on Winneka, which is very oh, steep bad hill. Street. We were like, oh God, forget it. Not only is it a steep street, all the driveways are steep. And did anyone Slope, even have candy? Or they'd be like, why are you trick or treating here? So, anyway, hopefully I got you your uniform back before you needed it for work. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, were you currently working there? And you borrowed the uh, uniform? Oh, I, I don't. Think, yes, you were. Wondering. I don't think they let you keep them. Oh, you know what, I don't you know what? Back then, they probably did just give them something else. I had jobs where they were like, what size are you? Go to the closet and get it. And it's like, who knows that it had even been washed? <laughs> the Odo BO on this is uh, yeah. strong. <laughs> so Can I get a fresh one? I, I could see them just having like, you know, a stash of uniforms. Because otherwise, I can't imagine that I would have we ever gotten rid of no, it. No, we wouldn't have gotten no. rid of it. I would have kept being that McDonald's. Worker. Yeah. Well, it was it, it was hilarious. You're I remember it. it very clearly. It was oh, you're loving maroon it. with like little mm-hmm. white pinstripes and like maroon pants. And I think I sewed the little legs to make them more like a peg leg because they were kind of like <gasps> you did. That's right. And ugly. Oh and I was like, uh, as if oh my god, that's as if so I extra. wanted my McDonald's uniform to be super cute. But like, you were what? kind of new wave. You so okay, you, but. Who's even drive. like seeing your legs behind the counter? Everyone coming into McDonald's. Well, Although I was the drive-through with, queen. Which, yes. <laughs> didn't uh-huh. someone have a crush on you and like, I hate to say, but propose for a green card? <laughs> Oh yeah, there was a cook ah. who was. He wrote me a poem or yes. something Aww. about my milky skin or something. It was very oh sweet, God. but he's I was, like, yeah. "You are so pale. What is that?" I know. Let me tell you, I sweet. I was so impressed. Irish Catherine, I'd be like sound asleep, and I'd be hearing Dad like wake her up because he was going to drive you there. Like you had to go at like five a.m. or something ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. I did the morning shift a lot, and, we and Dad would drive you. Yeah, yeah and then they were like, they decided you could just ride your bike at Okay, because I rode all the way up to Racquetball World at 5 <gasps> o'clock in the morning, and oh that's like three times way, as far. Way farther. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I mean, I had around. so many close calls yeah. with like people almost But I think me. this was because I was one of the early people to ever have a job, so they were still they like, were like, excited this about is exci- it. And right, you know, supporting it or whatever. And then later, and they're like, all these various children have jobs. They can do whatever. <laughs> just get yourself there. Good luck. I'm I mean, I think it was because I was one of the first ones oh, okay. to have a job that required that me to sense. be somewhere. See, my birthday's in October, and I had a few uh, costume parties. Oh, God, oh, yeah. You did. Yeah. Oh, I remember the one party you had where we, like, hung the donut, and we did bobbing for apples. Yes. We did the whole, like, We did all school. the theme Yeah. It was basically themed after, you know, the Great Pumpkin. Like, we definitely right. did the bobbing for apples, and we did, like, you put a donut on a string, and we hung it from the stick. <laughs> There's were a you picture supposed of to eat it? it? Or what were you supposed, supposed to eat it? I don't know. How like, old were you, maybe? At some point, like, it, like, oh, falls ten. off the string. I'm, like, not sure what the point of that Under game Under 10 was. years old, because um, my girlfriend, Heather, came, and as she likes to say she was a hooker for the 10th time. Oh, That's like God. literally <laughs> the only costume she ever dressed up. I'm like, your mother let you out like that? And I tried to do What like, does a hooker look like, I wonder? I don't remember. But <laughs> as, as a third grader, you're like, hmm. I don't know. And I tried to be like, a Grecian goddess. So like, remember that? We just took a... We had a like pink... A no, there was a pink piece of material that was like very flowy. Oh. No, no, no. I think the pink material was my old angel costume yes. from the second grade. I might have broken it down. And, you know, it was, we were Project Runway before we knew oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> Very inventive no, I think, out of this. And it had like a gold like lining. So it could have been. So our I, I did like a one oh. shoulder thing. And I think mom actually did my hair up in braids or something. I remember thinking I was like so cool. But like it was like. <laughs> where, where is the picture proof? But the, but the party inside, it was fine. But I remember then trying to wear it out trick or treating. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> it was cold for one. I'm gonna commit to the costume. Yeah, because sometimes it was super hot. hot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, we've had scalding hot Halloweens where your makeup, you know, your Dee Dee was a clown. Our little neighborhood friend was a oh, clown yes. a lot, uh-huh. and that was the weird thing. It was sort of like, who are you trick or treating with? I being dead middle. The older kids had little no interest in me going with them. And you guys, you know, and I'll say this for this year too. If you see teenagers out trick or treating, don't be a jerk about it. It's like. Hey, you know what? Better than the alternative. If they're just if they're just out treating, not tricking, I think it's fine. Yeah. I mean, I do like a bit of a costume. Uh, when you right. they woke up just a teenager, you're like, <laughs> but you know what's yeah, fascinating yeah. to me is with the whole trick or treating thing you're saying about teenagers. So two houses before the one we lived at now. It was a very high traffic Halloween area. Mm. Like, yes, we would give out somewhere between weekdays 
like 300 to 400 pieces of candy a weekend halloween was Ugh. like six to eight hundred pieces wow Ooh. but i'm definitely a person who's not like here's one it's like no. oh my god just give them like a handful and i'm never like picking for them or anything i had no problem i'm gonna give it if an adult really wants to come up and get my candy you can have it. i know because a lot of the candy is not great oh. although no i always get good candy like what's your version <laughs> of good candy uh yeah. snickers oh. peanut m and yeah, that's good Premium Milky level. Way. I mean, you go to Costco and you buy the three hundred, you Whoa. know, back. Because my previous house was like yours, remember? And I did not know that. I think f- this house might be like, but you're never home. I know. Uh, I have the lights uh, out. No, uh, I do leave a big pumpkin out for kids the one to take kid candy. Dumps into his. Someone, back. You, Ring has made Halloween very interesting because you can go back <laughs> and find the little jerk who went like dump it all in my bag. But uh, my previous house, there was a park about a block oh, and a yeah. half away where they did sort of a pre like an Halloween event. event. Yeah. So everybody oh, was wow. at that and we lived in the flats, unlike your friend, Vanessa Virginia, who lived in Hills. So it was perfect to take kids trick or treating after the Halloween, you know, little party at the local park. The first year, I mean, and my husband, as you know, like likes to give abundance and mm-hmm. food and, yeah. and parties. I mean, he ran out I'm to sure. buy more candy in the middle of it. He was sweating balls. He oh, he l- he gets out. sweaty when like, he was off. freaking out. Like he's like, ah, we had no idea, we had no idea. So even the next year, I was like, we had got an invitation to go. He's like, we can't go out. We can't go out. We got like seven hundred kids knocking at our pressure. door. I and think we, he's moved past. We have like a white picket fence. I mean, like we can't be closed for Halloween. So, <laughs> and you know, I am one of those people that like, I buy Halloween candy that I like the Laffy Taffy and stuff Ooh. like that. Like I will not want no. that in my house. So there's no temptation. Now that I have a kid, you know how mom would look through our bags of candy and like sort through it. Yeah, oh, I do. There's that with no mine. way she wasn't pulling out some of her faves for her own treat purposes. <laughs> Maybe. My favorite is the um, the flavored Tootsie Rolls you only get around Flavored? Halloween. Yeah, like the orange and green oh. and yellow. Oh, oh my the, God, they're the so blue good. one, which is vanilla. No, no blue. What? <laughs> it, the blue is the all- best one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, I'll get some and I'll give you all the blue. I just oh, like right. the long skinny Wait, Tootsie Roll. Go old school. But God, when they get hard, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> That all didn't go well together. But I mean, I will go through. Well, Ethan's you can't keep the Tootsie Rolls because they are not sealed. Oh God! So anything that is not like would you sealed, go through your kids' that wax paper? I go through perfect. my kids' Good candy every time. I used time. to throw that stuff out. Now I don't. It's I like throw out gonna... a good amount of stuff. Really? Yes. Yes, I, I bag it all up. The stuff we don't want, and we donate it. Well, and so like someone else gets it to, like, poisoned. The military? <laughs> no, but if it's like hard balls of sugar, you're like, what? It, or just there's a bunch of gross candy. We might. Oh. I, I mean, there was like this thing this dentist used to do. Like she would donate. Right. Like how many pounds of candy you donate, she would donate to the school or something. So yeah, we did donate it, but oh, you did not go through. You do. I did, but my purpose was point out my favorites mm. and <laughs> hoarding them for myself. Like, oh my yeah. god, your kid could care less anyway i know but he's not gonna appreciate dark chocolate he's not gonna appreciate the long skinny tootsie rolls oh my gosh like a strawberry or rolls. lemon starburst hello mm. now those are his favorite too which is so annoying oh my god i cannot it's so hard after your braces like to put something so chewy like a starburst in your mouth i still have a nightmare of it like ripping out your braces like i can't i cannot yeah we all were of the era of maybe you weren't john were you full metal mouth yeah no. yes i was so no clear braces don't visit line no invisalign. it was like you know one day you're at school the next day you show up it's like hello with a head not gear. even like the stick on did anybody have the stick on stick uh, we on? had like no. the full no. wrap around no i had yeah. the stick on we the had little glued on. on oh you did yeah. oh, okay, no. No. the back teeth were metal bands but the front yes oh ones. no oh, we got like on. full wraparounds in the front right Liz yeah they were no, like Liz the dentist put in me I in there I wish I did because Iron Maiden Liz, style ripping braces. them out like t- oh, taking God. them off but how you does that like work were, like isn't there a space in between each one because yeah. it's wrapped in metal that's like, the retainer work afterwards but in Laguna, the famous uh, candy shop there, one year Vanessa and I, I wish I had wraparound because I bit into a caramel <laughs> apple and my little glued braces came right off. So it's still like on the on the wire, but That's I was like, right. oh no. So you so could I just slide like, it. Yeah, I could just leave it on the wire. Like I was very careful the rest of the weekend. Which is awful because we would always oh, try to make God. out with boys there with braces. So Try awkward. to uh, succeed, baby. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Hello, boys. It's like, oh God. Or like when you're supposed to be wearing the rubber bands, like if you oh, 
Oh, shit. Oh, I haven't worn or like full on headgear. And then I'd like oh, yeah, put like yeah, yeah. six rubber bands in like a, the day before I go to the dentist. I'm like, this isn't going to do anything. Wait. Wait. R- ripped my whole back thing off. I'm like, oh, it's a Wait. good thing I'm going to the, the ortho now. John, you were more. at the choir concert, little Lauren's choir concert this spring. And there was a girl with rubber bands on, on stage. You're like, could you just take them off for the show? Like oh I God, did not notice. That. You did not notice. It's like, and she's singing. I'm like, like I was just waiting for like one to pop. Yeah. <laughs> How old was she? I mean, the, that choir is like uh, second to fourth grade. Oh, okay. She's young. I mean, they but start still. them young because they're trying to like get them to grow in properly. Or okay, something. so back to candy really quick. The <laughs> difference between my daughters Morgan and Lauren. Lauren's first Halloween, I tried to keep it easy, and we did our neighborhood. She was like in a stroller, a little ladybug costume. Poor Morgan. You could tell there's no decorations. That was definitely like no one's home, no one's answering the door. We went too early. Our neighborhood does not do it. So the second year, we went to mom's neighborhood, which is pretty good. And we um, met, we had a friend for Morgan, so it's a little more festive, you know. And we're like two houses in, and I'm like, oh my God, Lauren's already tired. She's like sitting on the floor. What is she doing? Oh, she's eating her candy. Which she's gotten already. Yeah. <laughs> two houses in, she's on in the middle of the sidewalk. Do, 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 do. I'll just eat when this. You get a good score. You got to you gotta go, man. And you can't I, be waiting I, on that. And then there's like Morgan who's like, mom, because one year we were at Catherine's house. We went mm-hmm. with Adam. And she's like, mom, can I have a piece of candy? I'm like, it's Halloween. Yes, you can have like three. <laughs> what <laughs> what have three. Five. I don't know. I had a girlfriend. Her name was Kathy. And she had kind of a large family. And uh for some bizarre reason, like, you know, they would have a pantry that you opened up and it was like, you know, gold light emitted from it. Yeah. Because ding dongs, Twinkies, <laughs> chips. Like, Where is this mom? I shopping? was like, and the mom would be like, do you guys want White Castle? Do you want donuts for dinner? I'm like, what alternate upside down universe is this? <laughs> Take out. What? Oh, crazy. And what like, TV show have I just watched? She had into? twin brothers that like were kind of wild and crazy. And she had this... W- the house was kind of very old fashioned for me in the San Fernando Valley, but it was built with like almost like widow peaks and little small windows. And one of her bedrooms was in, upstairs like that. And the brothers, we so wild. I remember one time we're in the window and like they took a hose and was squirting the <gasps> hose to the window at us. And the mom's like, you crazy boys. I'm like, what? So I was like, I, we made a plan. My girlfriend, Heather and I, like we are doing Halloween in oh, her house yeah. this year because there are like no freaking rolls. So it was like, yeah, we all, you know, departed her house at a dusk probably all dressed as hookers like i have no idea <laughs> no i have no idea what i was dressed as adams oh. yeah but and we went wild i mean when we had the old school you had a pillowcase because no bag two pillowcases no bag that existed that was big enough to the haul that we were going to get so we had so much candy and i thought oh my gosh we walk back into our house like it's like 10 o'clock the family's like watching exorcist with like popcorn oh i was like what is happening here <laughs> like we were never allowed to watch horror films much as one that was based on catholicism are you kidding me so uh, this, she's like oh, okay got you guys are gonna go up to the room okay bye come back down we're gonna watch like the bad seed later i'm like or poltergeist i was like oh my gosh uh, but i've been too much chicken shit for that so i was like okay yeah let's go back up to your room but I'm like, wait, your mom doesn't need to sort our candy? She's like, what are you talking about? Nope, I'm there's like, no razor, blades, razor blades, and blades and acid. <laughs> like, like, do you have to go through it? Staples or tax? I, exactly. I thought it was no, mostly just... No, my mom's got just plenty just... of razor blades and acid. She doesn't need any from us. <laughs> <laughs> I thought sorting was mostly just for junk. Junky candy. That's all. I, I don't but, know. Mm, Open wrap. I think it was just yeah. for junky candy. But there was always the scare. That of course there was the scare. It, it couldn't have been for junky candy because no mother scanned through a a bag of candy has ever taken Smarties away. Yeah. That is the junkiest of candy. And I it's always give those over. every year. <laughs> I they do because it's not sealed. Because they come in that like Willy Wonka weird pack with like is it the oh Laffy Taffy? You're giving the crap because, out. No, but that's what I do too. Because I, I also don't want good stuff in my house that yes, I want to eat. Over. Eric's terrible. He right now has a bowl by the front door with Snickers because they're, they're coming. They're coming in three weeks. The ironic thing is. The day of Halloween, he'll probably be like, mm, shut it down, turn the light <laughs> off. Like, he won't even have <laughs> the house that's like all prepared. I, and then the day of, he's season. like, this is a drag. He's Never like, mind. I actually don't want to deal with people coming to the house. And then I will take Adam trick or treating, which he still wants to do. This Aww. year, he told me he wants to be an angel. I was like, Aww, where did that so come from? Sweet. I don't know. Okay. So, anyway, go on, Liz. Yeah, so then we go to her little Widow Peak room, hidden, which is house was the weirdest enclave. Like, I purposely went, you know, now we're of the era the parents are selling the family home. I was like, I have to go to the open house because are my memories correct at this house? They were. So she had this little Widow Peak bedroom that was, like, so hidden. Like, I feel like you went, no joke, through a hidden door to, like, get to her room. <laughs> I thought, you know, I remember the house. It was kind of off a main street. It's 
uh, there's a main drag and then it's a busy street flats as well. So I just remember dumping out and we just like ate. It was like one in the morning. Like we woke up like chocolate over oh our God. lips. And like I was like, is this heaven? Like I don't understand where we are. <laughs> I thought you were going to be sick. Oh, um, probably. I don't. You did kind of have a little tummy problem. I still have a sensitive stomach in the sense of like. Did if you some, barf? <laughs> probably. You know what I mean? I was, you know. You're I, like just get it over with. No. Yeah. Well. I do have a gift for that. Like if somebody obsessed my stomach, it's not like Mark who will like be green. I'm like, I'm going to hold on to it. No, I, my body's my like, body's let's get it over it. with. But no, I mean, I just think, I just remember just loving being at our house and having like no rules and no parent overwatch. We didn't really have that many rules on Halloween to be, because most of my friends wanted to come to our house because it was like, whatever. What was the famous story of you went trick or treating and it was the first time Dee Dee, my sister-in-law met another neighborhood kid named Jane who came from a big family. Didn't they end up like hating each other? Yeah. God. Wasn't there a hole in the pillowcase, but we had to share a candy with her? Oh no, no, no. This is Eddie. We took <gasps> Eddie trick or treating. No. Does everybody remember the Eddie story? <laughs> Edwina what? was I'm it? <laughs> a very big disappointment. All I know is like, I'll be the sad panda at the end of the story that had to have the candy shared with him. We were all pissed. We're like, you idiot. Didn't you notice that there was no weight to your bag of candy? Okay. So what happened? You're jumping the story. Um, we're the Killmans. We use freaking pillowcases. Of course there's a hole in one of the pillowcases is being used it's as a, a candy It's the bag. corner. It's the corner. <laughs> yes. Seam comes undone. It's worn out. Oh, yeah, because the, the pressure of the candy. Mm -hmm. And it's like a little funnel, and it's just like, whoop. So you just girls leading a trail of candy through the out. neighborhood. You girls went out, and well, I think we <laughs> took Eddie with you. We thought it would be cute to take the younger siblings, which have then, of course, it was Drag not cute. you down. It's like, you're kind of pain now. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, we took him. And I took John a couple times, but at that point, I was like full-on adult, and I was not going up and getting candy, but I did take him. You were like escorting him. Yeah, he was so cute. Um, but we took Eddie because we thought he was cute. And then, yeah, he had a hole in his freaking bag. Super and, cute move. Yeah. And he got home, and he's like crying, and... <laughs> My mom is like, to me and my friends that we have to share our candy, we're like, they're like, I'm going home. I'm like, what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> but we did. We shared. I mean, he was so sweet. He probably didn't realize we gave him nothing. But I think you were a little baseball player in that, no doubt. that area. Oh, God. Uh, for a How couple many times we were baseball players? Virginia player. was that little over baseball player. God, slugger. I slugger. bet that costume still is in the house somewhere. Oh, God. <laughs> Everything's in that attic. She has gotten rid of nothing. <laughs> no, we did clean it out at one point. So that it feels Maybe. like now I look at it, I'm like, I don't think we did. But we were talking. We did. I mean, there was a point it was like you could access stuff. And it was like, now it was me and you cleaned it out, Liz. We I did the shelves and stuff. Oh, yeah. That's right. You, about, you can totally access stuff. There's just, it's like limbo. You get it. It is Box frightening. Your head, put one leg forward, then turn, twist. The magical box get, of oh, costumes. I, it's got to still be in I there. I lost the light. Yeah, because Maybe. there was the great um, Mork and Mindy There was suspenders. a really good, um, yeah. yeah, there was a really like, good clown one, too. I think the Mork and Mindy suspenders actually were part of the clown costume. But oh. then Robin Williams, uh, God rest his soul, wore suspenders Rainbow as the characters yeah. Mork and and a suspender so i think it was like oh i've got white jeans and a colored t-shirt and if i put on these suspenders i'm mark <laughs> like what i think I, there's a picture of me and you where we did like some dumb mime thing <laughs> oh for sure one of our plays. <laughs> and we're both in white jeans and suspenders wasn't that the talent show though in the backyard, I think it was. No, some, like, we were visiting a family. family. <gasps> no, there's Tawny's like an in embarrassing Seattle, picture. Yes. Of us. Yes. Oh, that is where. Oh, it is. you're like yeah. winking, like holding one eye shut. Like it's we've got to find that picture. Classic. That we had. Somebody has a lay oh. on me. I, I, I guess Wait. my talent was hula. Oh God. Okay, <laughs> uh, we had the horrible <laughs> summer bowl cuts from Grandpa's. Oh. House. We can't get into that. That's too. I last week or the week before we had Mom on, and she talked about Dad being in the Navy. And I actually felt bad because there were no, like, <laughs> you want to go, like, something should be sacred. So dad's hat as an mm -hmm. officer in the Navy, I remember. You our... wore it as a sexy sailor girl, <laughs> and I was a cat. But we were adults, and we were, like, 21 going to a bar. Yes. You probably. Wait, was that the one with Teresa? And Teresa she was, was like the, the Chiquita banana lady. <laughs> the fruit thing with on the okay. fruit bowl on her head. Okay, this is the craziest story, and you have to put Carmen this. Carmen Miranda. Right. Carmen Miranda, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, sorry. You have to no, put this in sorry. the context of, <laughs> gotcha. like, we should have known better, but it was an era. And so 
Uh, yes, it was last minute. We're like, okay, what are you gonna? You pulled out like a full on black bodysuit and stuck a tail on the back and little ears, ears and looked so incredibly sexy. I'm like, fuck her. So yeah, I have be sexy too. Yeah. So I had <laughs> little black short shorts and did a great white collared shirt and I had this mm-hmm. from Aardvarks the resale store uh-huh. it was like a black jacket probably busboy jacket from like a fancier restaurant with gold buttons so it looked kind of military and I put that on and I'm like and of course I'll just take dad's officer navy it was hat. tiny too. that was a small hat right so I and my thing was like come aboard oh, oh shit. my god so, Yikes. so we Teresa shows up our house and like her mother's taking a glue gun and every plastic fruit because her mom was very crafty <laughs> and made this complete headpiece. So we go out into Hollywood. Now Hollywood has not had their famous West Hollywood costume parade for a few years because of COVID, but Hollywood and Halloween is crazy. Like it is just a show of a million people. So we end up like at a party, then we. We're out somewhere like right off Hollywood Boulevard. I see someone I'm like, I think I know the person. Oh my God, is that? And so I say his name and he's like, hey. Now, Teresa at the time, let's just say, didn't date anybody, was having a lot of fun. And at one point I look over and I'm like, the two of them are making out. Oh, God. <laughs> but that was like our crazy, like, you know, I remember one of my girlfriends got a bridal gown and when I like, <gasps> oh, it was, and then, but got in a fight. Got a good will, maybe. Oh, for sure. Like a very old school puffy pre, you know, the corpse bride, but that's basically what she's the vibe. Bride yeah, that's good. what's her vibe, which was really good. Okay. Moment of truth. Because yeah. the big party for Halloween was your surprise. Was it your 30th? <laughs> yeah. Moment of truth. Did you know the party was going to happen? Absolutely not. Oh, my God. Okay. So Mark pulled off you being Sonny and Cher all on his own. Okay. I think we might <laughs> have talked about it. band. It was right. a great party. We might have talked about it on another podcast. But for my 30th, my husband, and I felt like, you know, I was like, are we going to have a party? He's like, what do you want for your birthday? We're, we're going back and forth, back and forth. And I think there was something like we, there was a dinner planned, but... Uh, it was also the era that people were throwing a lot of surprise parties. Like I had a friend that surprised. We all surprised her. She was not into it. Went into the bathroom, never came back out, and we all left. <gasps> oh, I remember that. So it was yeah. the era of surprise parties. So I was like, I'm gonna get a surprise party. Mm. Well, unfortunately, that weekend the two there were like uh, there was like a Friday night. Like twice, I thought like he was leading me into a restaurant. I'm like. <gasps> And it looked great. And I was like, no, like so annoyed. And there was like another time when like we were going over to a friend's house and I'm like, Mm -hmm. there's a lot of cars in the the neighborhood. I am ready to be surprised. You were on to them. Thank you. I'm looking good. (laughs) No. So by Saturday, when he takes me to a movie at the Universal City Walk and we even go to like dinner or apps at Planet Hollywood. They lead me to a table upstairs, and now I'm getting annoyed because I didn't get all cute to go to a movie, which we actually sat through. So I was like, not looking my best. So I was like, if this is a surprise party I'm at gonna Planet be Hollywood, yeah. I'm going to freaking kill him. At the same time, I thought we were having one. So I walk in like, <gasps> okay, we really are just having like, you know, buffalo wings here. Like, what <laughs> the hell? <laughs> So by, the time we, yeah. the so by the time we're heading home that night, it is already like nine o'clock at night because we went out for like an early dinner. I mean, I don't think a party is starting much less at my own house at like nine, nine thirty. Like, how'd you guys pull that off? Movie and dinner. That's when you put it all together. And our neighborhood was busy enough that no, it didn't like I didn't know his cars. So we walk in and like I said, I do not look my cutest. I think I even have a hair pulled back in a bun. Like I did not look great. But I walk in and it's like, surprise! And I almost don't recognize everybody because everybody's in costumes. Oh, right. oh yeah. Everybody right. looks crazy different. So yeah. I'm like shocked and like almost like scared at first. Like, what is even happening here? I left this house like four hours ago. And then, of course, my Martha Stewart party planner, anal self, came in like, oh my God, how did this get pulled off? Well, I'm like, <laughs> what do does, I agree with all yeah, these Yeah, just decisions. all these choices yeah. and looks. And believe me, there were people that March just went straight on through my phone book. I'm like, hello. I haven't spoken to you in five years for a reason. There were quite a few unusual people there. Yes, I was like, oh my goodness. But, you know, there were highlights. You were Titanic, Rosemary. (gasps) Yeah, the corpse Titanic. Frozen Rose. Yes, Frozen Rose. Rose. Well, I think what's in the theme as far as the guests were concerned, we were told to come as celebrity couples. Yeah, celebrity couples or or famous Famous people people. or something. Yeah, because like my mother in law was Elizabeth Taylor. Yes. Yeah. And oh, my sister in law yeah, yeah. was Lucy, I think. So they were great costumes. Yeah. Whereas, you know, my in laws came as older tail end of Elvis. 
and oh a, God, a very right. interesting Dolly, Dolly Parton. <gasps> oh my right. God! I totally there were like remember. five Elvises. And then mom was a nun. Her oh, and her God. friend were nuns, weren't You're they? Like, just I stop. think they were. Where's your Jesus? She already I mean, had a lot of nuns. You were really good. You were. I did Barbie. And then I had, because Eric oh, was like right. completely not, he was like, what am I even going to, what are you talking about? Get dressed. What? A, and I was like, just put on fatigues because he had been in the army. He graduated from high school and then went straight into the army. So he still had like all these old, you know, fatigues. I'm like, just put that on. And I instigated like, let's get everyone name tags. Because I'm like, this is not much of a costume, Eric. Mm-hmm. And I put a little G.I. Joe name tag on him. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh my God, this is perfect. So I was Barbie and he was G.I. Joe. Yeah. Like we were little like, you you know that was good and Maddie and John you were I got no memory I know I I don't no idea no idea <laughs> what you were the party Hello. What <gasps> John was Dr. Dollars. Evil and I was Austin Powers. Yes. I forgot. Oh, I did Austin right. Powers as a costume for a couple years. There. Right. <laughs> I think John. Oh my god, it's you so glasses, good. The glasses are an automatic like, oh, glasses, put a wig on, get a crazy 70s shirt, you're good to go. Yeah, and John has skull cap on that I you didn't bother to blend it. So it was just oh, a gosh. skull cap sitting on top of your head. <laughs> so then I It's not in the instructions. So then I'm looking at everybody like, well, this is awesome for all of you, you, you know, but what are we going to be Wait, what was Ginny? Did we remember you don't, don't remember. Um, okay. All right, maybe it'll come back to you. Okay, it go, will come back. Go to back me. to your. So I'm like, oh my gosh, like you know, what are we gonna be? It's like, no, get into the bedroom. We've got you covered. So I was Cher and Mark was Sunny. Right. He got the costumes and like now, had it ready for you. Yes, so but he was There's rocking. Something that you don't really realize on this podcast because mm-hmm. it's audio. Mark usually has a full goatee. That that's what I'm going to. Yeah. More than that, sometimes he'll even go all the way out to like somewhat beardish, depending on you know the season. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Liz. So you girls all whip me into the bedroom and make up and uh, Catherine, I, I know, think famously, he hold on, put on, on the yeah. upside down I, eyelash. I, and so I, all I'm like, this is, I looked like a very wonky share. Like what's happening here? Because it's extremely long. Like now it's almost like we're all used to them, but they were like really like caterpillar eyelash. And it was super long, but one was upside down. So I was like, I looked crazy. <laughs> oh my God, I don't remember this. <laughs> like freaking crazy. And then here's the deal. I am very fair with very light blue eyes. So a you look long black possessed, wig yeah. just made me look like that kid that crawls out of the TV. Like, like so you had to do my makeup to match it or really do makeup, which we didn't have time for that. So the pictures are <laughs> not, crazy. Not great. But it's fine. So Mark then whips into the other room to get ready as Sunny. But he shaves off most of his <gasps> goatee right. to do a, a like a, a handlebar. Handle yeah. Oh my god! It was amazing. It was amazing, but Liz hated it. I was like, Oh my god! <laughs> Liz the hates her no facial hair they ever. Thanks. I was like, You're She's not like, getting... how quickly is that going to yeah, grow you're back? You're not going to get laid for a month. Okay, great. Like, <laughs> oh my god! So it's just like <laughs> very alarm. Happy birthday to me! <laughs> <laughs> At least he didn't cut his hair. That oh god! Was... When he actually shaved off his whole to while I was pregnant with Ethan and like, cut his hair. He came in and I just burst into tears. I was like, well, oh my God, what did you do? I can never make love to you again. Like, <laughs> who is that? Wait, <laughs> Bri- Brian came home the other night from a haircut. <laughs> He brought. He, had, he was getting sushi on the way home. He's like, "Okay, Friday night. We're trying to get through Game of Thrones." Whoa. And I'm like, I look over and I'm like, "Oh my God, your hair is too short. I hate it." <laughs> <laughs> it's so odd. like we shouldn't say that. It's so bad. We should keep Listen, our mouth shut. Can I say something as a guy? Yeah, we know. We oh, know God. it's too late. The guy fucked Shit. up and your hair's too short. Right. Now you gotta deal with the rest of your life for the next month. So uh, just please don't. Oh don't my god. Me, right, I, let me it just came out. Like, I was really hungry. <laughs> he waited an hour for sushi. I would have gone up and been like, never mind, we're getting El Pollo Loco. Like what the hell? Oh my <laughs> god, how Pollo frustrating. Loco delivered to our table <sighs> at the sushi restaurant. <laughs> Well, I think like or boys are really discount. funny about haircuts. Like I've definitely with two sons taking them to get haircuts. It's, even since they were little, it's like you could walk out of there and they're like, I like it. Yeah, it's great. <gasps> well, it's the worst haircut. I'm not going to school tomorrow. And you're like, what? You just told her you liked it. We're going back in. No, we're not. Oh. And I'm like, I have literally have told them a hundred times like, well, they're cutting your hair. You tell them what you want. And like, if they're not doing what you want, you talk to them. And uh, even still, like Jack just called me the other day and he's like, yeah, I just got a haircut. I'm like, Jack, you literally have like a huge tweak of hair coming out from the side. (laughs) 
<laughs> side of your head, like in the sideburns, it's like an inch longer than everything FaceTime. else. And I can see it on FaceTime. <laughs> so in real time life, you don't think that's obvious? He's like, oh man, I didn't notice. We're having a really good chat. I'm like, <laughs> and I go, well, you gotta go back, bro. Like, there, it's messed up. It's actually uneven. And I was like, oh my God. He did go back. But I'm like, what? Have I not taught you guys anything? Like, you have, and he's like now a young man in college. So you have no trick or treaters and you live on a hill and you have a whole staircase. You you are not planning to go to the candy, are you? Oh, to the trick or treating? No. No one's coming to your house. Last year. She's going to come down to your house, Liz, uh, and just hang out with you. She's never home. (laughs) Well, like at our old house, it was up on a hill too. And we were just like, hey, we just walked down to the flats and me and Kirk just walked around and got the vibe. We went into a couple friends' houses and had a glass of wine and like kept walking. It was oh, like, that's a cool yeah, idea. if you live on a hill, no one's coming but up this, that hill. But this this one is like, no, we don't know yeah, anybody in the flats but you, and yeah. you won't be home. What? I know. You're coming up that hill. No, you know, we do no. not have a plan yet because I still have two of age that are very much into trick or treating, even oh, though Morgan's yeah. like my size. But I do not wear nowhere. I was like, maybe Liz's. That's always our backup. Yeah, but. I know what we're doing because Halloween this year is Monday. What that's a, a bummer. Day, yeah. So I'm not sure yet. I did ask Ethan if he wanted to trick or treat. He said, yeah. I'm like, okay. And then he is the worst. So I said, what would you like to be? And we used to be the family that would do yeah. theme oh costumes. God, the best. Now, the year that we really nailed it was uh, the Buzz Lightyear year. Because I got the little Buzz Lightyear costume from you, Rosemary. Oh, it was so Oh, my good. gosh. It was so it was cute. Such a good one. And then I got Sally. Ethan was Woody. Sorry. Ethan was Woody. And he was totally cute. And I was Sally. So I ordered. Because I had gotten rid of the Buzz costume. Right. It was little. It was for a three-year-old. Are you sure Mark didn't wear it? Because I ordered the <laughs> I was going to say, because it's, it's, no offense to Mark, but it was a buzz, like three Zs on there. Yeah. Those costumes you order online, wow, do they merchandise those fabulous online. You're like, damn, that's going to be like a four-piece costume with a fabulous vest and hat and no, comes all one, one big suit. piece. It's one big <laughs> lacquer piece of suit, like a new camel toe. No, it's and like, like it's a big so, nylon. It's so <laughs> awful. You're like, I can wear nothing underneath this. Like, uh, like, so you almost had to go like a size up, but it's all one print. So you're like, okay, there's no actual like 3D dimension. You probably should have just gone to like you know Goodwill and gotten like a little sh- yellow plaid shirt and some. I jeans. Have time for that. Effort. So I wore the one piece Sally, and it looks good. The hat, and I did the braids, and so it's all coming together. Like it's gonna look good. I order him this was the nylon. Buzz <laughs> Lightyear costume. <laughs> And it's the same thing where it's just one big like slip on tight white <laughs> nylon <laughs> and you can't really wear anything underneath it. But like graphically, like you're going to like, oh, you, gross. you like you had to wear a cup with it. I was like, oh, my God, you won't be able to walk in public. So he had like he was trying to figure that out. And he goes, well, where's the helmet? I'm like, what do you mean? What helmet? There's, there's not a helmet in the box. It's like a hoodie. He goes, no, it's just like if he puts the thing over, there's that Woody <laughs> Allen movie where they're all sperms. That's exactly oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. what he looked like. And I'm like, um, well, just don't wear that in, until we take like pictures. Like, I, I can't believe they, the, the helmet was sold separately and the helmet was expensive. Yeah. And I don't think I realized that and I didn't buy it. So he just has this white little like beanie cap that comes. Oh, the God. whole thing is so tight from like, <laughs> got, like camel toe. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> So it's like we go to our friend's house who you know lives in a flat area and we walk in and we win the prize because just the three of us all together look like amazing. But it's like, you know, we look crazy. Don't separate or everyone will be like, you guys are freaks. Well, that's basically how we go out trick or treating. And Mark kind of forgets that one of his friends lives in that neighborhood. So we're walking. It's dark in between houses. It's dark. So we walk past a crowd of people and we're past them. But you hear this voice go, Mark. And Mark turns around and someone just flashes a camera at him. <laughs> and he goes, oh, God. I'm like, what? He's like, that was my friend. I think it was Glenn who took it. He's like, I'm never going to let this down. And I look over and I'm like, nope. oh, God. Because he had put the white <laughs> thing up, too. <laughs> so there is a picture that comes up every single year. Mark looking like quiz like mark me like and in the full tight white <laughs> buzz light your outfit and he's like oh, i'll never God. lose down but he's so game like we've done like scientists and rockets we've done like you know the uh, tinkerbell was a good one. tinkerbell one was awesome the last thing i think we did is like a fan oh stranger things we did stranger things was awesome but last year was a sam witch so Ethan and Mark were peanut butter and jelly. I made it work, Virginia, and then I was a witch. (laughs) It was iffy. (laughs) Ethan was a banana, so it was like school lunch. Ethan was a banana, and I was jelly, and Mark was peanut butter side. And I said, we're a sandwich. We're school lunch. 
We made it work. Those were the type of ones you just were all black and just put like the weird thing over you. Like that was it. Well, so. I did not watch Stranger Things. So when you showed up at Rosemary's that year, you were Robin from I was Stranger Things. From Ahoy, the ice oh, cream you shop. Were the, they you were the at, ice yeah. cream shop yeah. worker. Ahoy. That's right. Mm-hmm. So yep. I thought it was from Ghostbusters, the marshmallows. <laughs> like the mar- <laughs> and Mark similar. was a hopper because he literally pulled out a oh, pair God. of tight jeans. <laughs> really tight jeans. A short sleeve Hawaiian shirt, which I think might uh-huh. I might have gotten the hopper shirt. But then he had like cowboy boots. Oh my God, the cowboy boots <laughs> that were Luke's, right? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> that Luke grew out of in the seventh grade. Yeah. And he slicked <laughs> back his hair and he really did um, look like Hopper. And then Ethan was. He was Dustin, Dustin. which you should have like hid the front teeth. Like you should have like blacked out uh, his front oh, teeth. True, yeah. But that was our, I think, our last group. No, like I said, we were sandwiched last year. We've dressed up as Ethan's still on board. Oh my God, this kid. But he will not so commit. Good. So it's going to be like, we're going to once again be like the week before. No, like, you've got a plan. I got a great yeah. idea for you. Oh, you do? It. And I also what? feel like, I don't know why we never did a group costume of this, because this is a great one. What? Uh, the Wizard of Oz. Mark is oh. the lion. You as either Glenda or No, Dorothy. we could really use Catherine's old dress for that. Yeah, where is that pink, fabulous dress? <laughs> I don't know. I want it back, though, because it was just such a big, ble- poofy, like, yeah, yeah, a lot of fabric. Oh, my God, this is too much Halloween. We have so much more to talk about. I suggest that we stop here and do another episode on Halloween for next week, because I'm still thinking about, like, at least five more topics Halloween-related. Okay. Yeah. okay, so thank you for listening to this episode of A Family Dynamic. Dynamics with a K. And please follow us on all of our social media at Family Dynamics. Also, our Patreon. We're going to get back to Ginny's breast cancer story on Patreon, I believe. Thank you, Virginia, mm-hmm. for sharing part of your story with us and hopefully encourages people to go get their mammograms. Mm-hmm. I guess that's it for this, but then we'll do more Halloween for our next episode. Great. Okay, thank you for listening to Family, Family Dynamics. Dynamics.